to be talking all about low back pain and sacroiliac joint pain. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Zoe Clark, I'm an osteopath and I've joined NERSS during the COVID-19 outbreak to help providing information and advice for everyone, especially with the self-isolation and lockdown and help, how you can help manage your AS symptoms through that. As always, the live video will remain on the page afterwards, so if you're only able to watch part of it, that's absolutely fine, you can catch up later. We'll also upload the recording of the video with a blog post and some exercise sheets to the NAS website later on in the new self-management section of the website, My AS, My Life. So do check out that section of the website later on. We've got loads of information on there about lots of different topics. So I hope everyone's keeping well. Feel free to drop a comment in the box um, to say hello, let me know that you're watching and do ask questions as we go along as well. I'm here to help, so um, ask me anything you need. Hopefully we'll cover quite a few different um, areas that you can put into your life to hopefully help manage low back and SI joint pain as well. So um, today we will be going through some exercises as well. So if you want to take part live, then feel free to wear some nice, loose, comfortable clothing. Um, there'll be floor based exercises. So um, either using an exercise mat or if you're unable to get onto the floor, then doing them in bed will be absolutely fine as well. Hi, Anne. Well, thanks for joining. Nice to see you again. Um, also, I will be going through a couple of massage techniques which you can use with the heel of your hand or you can use a tennis ball or one of my buddies, a spiky massage ball as well. I will be putting some links in the comment section afterwards, um, so I'll be referring to a few different things like previous blog posts I've done. I'll put a link to the spiky massage balls in there as well, so um, a few of them I will um, be uploading that afterwards. So yeah, absolutely, just ask me questions as we go along and we can do a bit of a QA and a afterwards in case there's something I haven't covered. And definitely at the end of the video, if there's some tips that you find particularly helpful for managing low back pain and SI pain, then please do let us know because we can put them in the blog post as well and hopefully help others as well if there's something that I haven't covered. Um, so yeah, we've got a few people watching already. Hi, John and Julie. Um, oh, so Julie's back pain is quite bad. Um, so not doing exercise at the moment. I will be discussing ways that you can kind of modify exercise because obviously you'll have better days than others so um, hopefully we'll be able to cover that in terms of what you can do on those particularly bad days and then hopefully build up then on the better days to slightly stronger exercises as well. Brilliant. Hi Brenda, Jenny, Claire, Abby, wow lots of people and James, Nolene, hi everyone. Okay great so um, we'll get, start get started. As I said just ask questions um, and you can also email me at zoe at nas.co.uk my email's in the video description. So if you want any um, particular advice, we can chat on the phone or I can send over some personalized ed exercise advice and things like that. That's all free as well through NAS too. So do feel free to get in touch if there's anything I can help with. So firstly, in terms of um, the low back and the sacroiliac joints, I imagine anyone with AS is going to know this anatomy pretty well because it's an area that is most commonly affected with it. Essentially, the lower back is formed of the five joints at the base of the spine. They sort of stack on top of each other like so. And then when they get to the bottom of the spine, at the top of the pelvis, they join into the larger bone, the sacrum here. And then the sacrum has a joint either side connecting to the rest of the pelvis. And they are the sacroiliac joints, the SI joints. So I'll call them SI joints just because it's a little bit easier to say in the rest of the video. So often when people feel discomfort in the SI joints, they'll describe pain at the base of the back going across and they'll say sort of around the hip area and top of the buttocks as well, because that's the area along the pelvis way where the sacroiliac joints lie. But also you can get that referred pain coming out and around and sometimes down into the legs and further up into the back as well. So sometimes it can be difficult to work out where the pain is coming from. So quite often a lot of the advice is going to be focusing on the back and the pelvis at the same time, because then you're covering both bases and you're going to be helping depending on, on where the problem is coming from. So in terms of actually what causes pain in the spine and in the pelvis during um, an, an AS flare up or AS in general, generally it is when you have active inflammation in the area that causes pain and stiffness. So definitely if you're getting frequent flare ups or severe, severe flare ups, the best way to manage these is to speak to your rheumatologist and look at ways that you're managing your AS generally, just to make sure that it's as well controlled as possible because no amount of exercise and things are going to help if you've got that active inflammation there. So it's worth making sure you're managing things as well as you can. You can also long term, if you get fusions in the back or in the pelvis, you can then get pain and stiffness associated with that as well. And it is important to note that people with AS can also get 
other injuries and aches and pains that everyone else can have. So you can have more than one thing going on at the same time. If you are experiencing different pain to usual, um, so if it's, if it's sort of an unfamiliar feeling, it's not feeling like a typical flare, that might be a sign that it is some kind of injury, like you've pulled a muscle or, or strained the joint um, or have a, a disc problem as well. So with that, I definitely recommend getting in touch with a physio, osteopath or chiropractor to discuss your symptoms and just see if there's any other advice um, that you could be following as well. And it is important to see your doctor sometimes with back pain as well. So I'll go through a few safety things. Um, I don't want to sound alarming, but they are symptoms that anyone with back pain, I always describe these because um, there's a particular condition that we want to keep an eye out for. Um, one in particular is called corda equina. So if you're experiencing back pain and you're getting these symptoms as well, it's something that although it is treatable, it needs to be treated as soon as possible. So if you have any back pain that's then traveling down into your legs, or if you're getting any numbness or weakness in your legs, and if you have any numbness in the saddle regions, the area between your legs, um, if you have any numbness there as well, or have any difficulty with bowel or bladder movement, so either being incontinent or unable to go to the toilet as well, or losing that sensation and kind of knowing if you do need the toilet or if you're having problems um, stopping or starting as well. All of those symptoms speak to someone at A&E immediately just to get checked out. As I said, it's um, a condition that is treatable, called a but it's something that it needs to be treated very quickly to make sure that you have no ongoing complications. It, it's not very common, so don't panic. I'm not suggesting um, that it's going to happen, but it's just something we need to be aware of. And it certainly is something that's not specific to AS. It can happen to, to anyone with a back problem. It's just that we need to know the symptoms to look out for. So after that <laughs> slightly scary beginning, um, the only other thing I would say is that if you're getting new severe pain in your back that doesn't quite feel like a flare up as well, it's worth speaking to your GP or your rheumatologist just to screen if there's anything else going on. And then if they do find that it is a flare up, then they're able to give you more specific advice and perhaps um, something like a, a short term anti-inflammatory or something to get things under control a bit quicker. So. Um, so I'll just have a quick look because we're getting quite a few comments already so I'll just check if there's anything I can be covering. Thank you everyone for joining. Um, Julie's asking about hip pain on both sides and lower back so absolutely we'll cover that because that could well be the sacroiliac joints that are causing that so hopefully the advice will be helpful but also a couple of weeks ago I did um, a video on hip pain as well so check back on the videos on here or head to the NAS website and then onto the My AS, My Life section, um, and you'll find all our information about hips as well. So hopefully that between this video and that one, we'll be able to cover it. Um, and absolutely, if you find that these things aren't helping, then please feel free to give me an email, zoe at nas.co.uk, or call our helpline as well, because it may well be that I can give you some um, more uh, individual advice and exercises as well. So in terms of actually self-managing, so obviously if it's not a, a major flare-up or it's not something else needing to see a doctor for, um, a flare-up in the in the low back and in the sacroiliac joint can cause that kind of pain and stiffness all across there. So what can you do to help manage it? The best thing um, that I would recommend is exercise. As I said at the beginning, exercise is going to look different at different points um, of how active the AS is. So if you're in a flare-up, one of the best things is just doing some nice gentle seated exercises and doing short walks frequently if you're able to. So the seated exercises I've gone through before in previous videos, so do check those out and we've got a write-up of those on the website as well. But essentially they're going to be doing the movements where you're turning each side, so you're rotating as far as comfortable. You're also then going to tilt over to each side to help stretch out through the joints and create some space through there. And then you can also do the movements where you're slumping down and then arching up towards the ceiling. So I've gone through those in detail in a previous video, so I won't go through them again, but they can be really good when you are flaring because they're nice and gentle, but they're getting some nice movement through there and they're stretching the joints as well. If you're particularly fatigued as well, they can be good because you can be resting most of the time and then just sitting up to do those exercises every hour or so just to stop things stiffening up and getting worse as well. In terms of then other exercises when, when the symptoms aren't as bad, I would definitely recommend something like yoga or Pilates. Um, to help again it's going to be working on both the movement but also on strengthening the muscles as well which long term is really important. You can also um, do things like cycling either a static bike or getting out, out and about if you're able to as well um, and obviously being careful if you're socially distancing at the moment um, and then Tai Chi and Qigong exercise classes can be really helpful 
There are lots of machines in the gym when we are allowed back in gyms. Um, things like the cross trainer, treadmill, rowing machine can all be really helpful. Uh, and then also the NAS physio led groups, obviously at the moment we're unable to run them due to the COVID-19 outbreak, but when they're back up and running, if you have one local to you, you can search our website and pop your postcode in to see if we have any groups close to you. Um, but that may be something that's helpful. One thing in terms of exercise classes, I definitely recommend uh, if you're new to the exercise class, joining a beginner's class first of all, and speak to the teacher and make sure that they understand what AS is and what is safe for you to do and what is helpful for you to do as well. It can be worth even asking around people in the area and shopping about for a teacher who is going to have a good understanding because you want to make sure that the classes are going to be safe and effective for you as well. Similarly, if you want to get in touch with me and I can always give you an idea of exercises that are particularly helpful and anything you need to avoid so that if you do join a class in the future, you're able to feed that back to the teacher as well. Um, in terms of other stretches that you can do, so in terms of the SI joints, the previous video, as I said, on hips can be helpful because the hips are so closely linked to the pelvis as well. So do take a look at those. I'm just going to check because we've got quite a few comments coming through. I just want to make sure that we're not um, missing any important questions. Um, yeah, lots of people are finding sitting uncomfortable, so I'll definitely cover that a bit. And Julie, find heat helps, and that's definitely, definitely helpful. Uh, yeah, Jenny, that's really sensible. So Jenny says that she's on biologics now as her inflammatory markers have been high continuously. Um, so she's trying to do physical activity in between flare-ups. And that's exactly right. So the idea is to have lots of different exercises and activities that are safe for you to do. And then knowing which ones you can do and when. So during a flare up, doing the most gentle movements and mobility exercises just to keep things loose and stop that inflammation building up. And then as the flare eases, you're then able to get back into the stronger exercises, which are then going to help long term, hopefully reduce the, the severity and the frequency of those flares as well. But absolutely just modify it as, as and when you need to as well. Um, Kirst is asking, so along with pain in the SI area, so along the pelvis, um, I get cramp-like pain in my calf muscles. Always go hand in hand. Any ideas? Um, so there's a couple of things this could be. I, if you don't mind just giving me, me an email, zoe at nas.co.uk, and we can have a chat because sometimes it can be to do with the spine itself rather than the SI joints. And there's lots of different causes of cramp as well. So I'd like to just ask a few questions just to make sure I'm giving you the right advice there. Um, and... Oh, good. So Kate's just started biologics and has been incredible for the last 12 weeks. So started exercising and want to make sure she does it safely. Absolutely. Hopefully I'll give you lots of advice for that. Um, OK. Yeah, Sarah's asking if, if inflammation can go into remission. Absolutely. So particularly with AS, any inflammatory condition, but particularly AS, you get those periods where you can get higher inflammation and we call that a flare up. And then you can get it then reducing down as well. So that's our, our overall aim would be to control the actual inflammation there. That's something you need to discuss with your rheumatologist because they're able to give advice on medications and things like that to control the actual cause of the inflammation too. Uh, John's asking about Pilates or Tai Chi. Um, so they are, they are different. Um, Pilates is more uh, floor-based exercises and strengthening exercises. Then Tai Chi is standing exercises. So it depends on your ability. Um, but there's lots of YouTube videos, so you can go and have a look on YouTube. Um, you don't even have to take part if you're not sure, but you can watch the video through and just see whether you think that'll be comfortable for you to do as well. Uh, and Samantha's asking about getting um, pain on both sides of the hip at night. Um, it used to only be one side, which is making it difficult to sleep. Um, she exercises every day, but nights are painful and it's progressively getting worse. Um, ah, and she's waiting for a rheumatology appointment, but that obviously has been paused because of lockdown. Um, so firstly, in terms of the rheumatology appointment, I'd recommend getting in contact with your GP because some rheumatologists are doing virtual uh, online appointments. So if that's a possibility, the GP may be able to make sure that they've got you on the list for that. Um, it might be something that is better than waiting longer to see them in person. Um, I have done previous advice on sleep and keeping comfortable during sleep, so definitely look back on our videos or on that My AS My Life section on the website again. Um, and yeah, I've got a whole section on sleep. But certainly if you're getting pain on, on both sides of the hip at night, sometimes lying on your back with a cushion underneath your knees can be helpful. Um, also, if it's painful to lie on the side, then using a mattress topper, uh, something cushioning on top of the bed, just so you're not getting the pressure there as well. 
but do feel free to send me an email because it might be that I can give you some advice on helping with the pain and calming things down as well. Um, right, so I think we're up to date on questions there. I'm just going to have a sip of coffee because I'm talking a lot today. Okay, um, also one other um, thing to note is that I'll share a link in the comments afterwards, but we have on our YouTube channel got a video of exercises to do in the morning as well. So if you find that your low back and SI joint pain and stiffness is particularly worse in the morning, then um, this video may be helpful because it's something you can do lying in bed before you're getting up and about and it can really help ease the symptoms first thing as well. Um, got uh, uh, So Fabio's asking, what's the best way to improve flexibility across back and hips? Uh, so the movement I was saying in terms of the seated exercises, which we've got on the website, um, but also a mixture of stretches and strengthening as well. So the stretches are on the website and then I'm just about to go through some strengthening exercises, which can be really helpful too. Um, and again, on our previous hip um, post, we I did some exercises on hips, particularly bringing the knee up to when you're lying on your back, bringing your knee up towards you and across so your stretching around the back of the hip and up into the back at the same time. That can be a really good stretch. For men in particular, it's important to note that men do generally have less flexibility in their hips just because of the way the bones of the pelvis and the hip are built in men compared to women. So it's something that is important to note. So don't feel like you're really going to be pushing things too much because everyone has different levels of flexibility. Um, if you wanted a personalised exercise plan, then do just get in contact with me and I can put together um, something and, and with options to advance the exercises as things improve as well. Uh, yep, and a few more comments in terms of um, biologics. Um, Mary's saying, my tailbone is quite painful and sitting is difficult at times. Yes, yeah, so you can get um, pain actually at the base of the sacrum and into the coccyx, right on the tailbone. You can get seats and cushions where they've um, got a supportive ring on the outside and then a gap either in the middle or at the back. This can be helpful because if it is almost like a, a bruise in the area, just having a period of time when you're not putting that pressure on can help that recover. And then you can return to using normal seats as well. Um, it might be something worth chatting to your GP about if it's really severe and if it's really um, affecting you know, whether you can sit daily and things like that as well, um, or do feel free to get in contact with me as well. Uh, so Emily's asking about any particular classes to avoid um, and also she's uncomfortable, uh, if I am uncomfortable but wouldn't class it as pain, should I stop the exercise I am doing? So it really depends on your own individual, both your level of, um, of AS, uh, what you've got going on in the spine as well um, and also sort of how active the condition is as well and your general level of fitness too in terms of classes. So some people do find that the high intensity exercise can be really helpful. Some people do find that it triggers a flare up. Um, in terms of things to completely avoid, there's nothing really that I would say across the board to completely avoid because it depends on you know, your own, own situation. If it is something you want to discuss, then just let me know. Um, but generally the high impact stuff you do want to be careful with because particularly if you've got any fusions in the spine, if you've had any surgery there as well, um, then you want to just be extra cautious in terms of the impact. But generally across the board, there isn't something I'd say that everyone should avoid. Um, and oh, I've just lost where I was in the comments. Bear with me. Um, oh yes, and if you're doing an exercise um, and you get discomfort rather than pain, um, should you stop? It depends on your own level of pain tolerance. Generally, I say try and keep within that pain-free range. If you do go into that discomfort range a little bit, and I would recommend just doing it a tiny bit and then waiting and seeing how you feel afterwards because sometimes it can feel okay at the time and then afterwards that pain then builds up. So anytime you're starting a new exercise or if you find that a regular exercise is starting to become uncomfortable, just play about with it and see how, how things respond for you. So some people do have to stick completely in that pain-free range and just when it is uncomfortable then just pull back a little bit. Some people are able to go into that range of discomfort where you're feeling the stretch or you're feeling the movement, but you're not getting into that real painful range. Um, so really it depends on the person really. But absolutely just take it nice and easy and then monitor how things are afterwards. Um, it can also be helpful to keep a diary as well of your exercises and your symptoms. You can use an app like the My SPA app on your phone, or you can just jot down uh, just your general pain levels, your general levels of stiffness, some people rate it out of 10 in terms of zero is no pain and no stiffness and 10 is the worst pain and the worst stiffness they've had. Um, so then you can note down the exercises you do each day and then you may well notice a pattern over time 
if the exercises are helping or not in terms of the day or two afterwards, how things are responding to it as well. Uh, Kate's saying that working from home means that I'm now sat at a desk instead of being on my feet and trying to find the best way to sit because in the evening my back is so painful at the bottom. Absolutely, so lots of people are finding that sitting for long periods are aggravating things. Um, even without AS, a lot of people find that. Unfortunately, the main advice I have is just to keep moving regularly. So the seated exercises that I mentioned and that are on our website can be really helpful. So even when you are having to sit working at your desk, you're able to then just do those gentle twisting movements. So you're keeping your back moving and also even just shifting from side to side. So you're lifting one hip up and then shifting to the other to lift that side up. That can be helpful just to get the movement in the back and take the pressure off. So that then at the end of the, day, the end of the day, it's not as uncomfortable. Uh, I do have a full blog post all on working from home as well. So Kate, do check that out and then just let me know if you need any other advice. Um, the only other thing I'd mention is looking at seating options. So you can move, uh, if you're working on a laptop in particular, you can move where you're working around the house to help use different seating options. Um, with a laptop, you can put it on something like the kitchen counter and stand for a period of time and then spend some time seated. And also a Swiss ball, like the Pilates style ball can be really helpful because they provide a little bit more cushioning than a chair would. And also, again, you can move about and bounce around quite comfortably um, while you're working without having to get up and move about so much as well. So do look at different options in terms of seating as well. Uh, Jenny, yes, Jenny uses hydrotherapy. Um, yep, I'll definitely go through that as well. Um, Pam, there's no particular recommendation for armchairs um, in terms of... Uh, in terms of like in, this, in a sitting room watching TV armchairs, I'd recommend having something that's relatively supportive and using a cushion in the small of your back to help keep it comfortable and keep you sitting upright. Sometimes it can be comfortable at the time if you're slumping down, but then when you go to get up, um, it's then more painful. So definitely keep it nice and supportive in your lower back as well. Some people find that having their legs outstretched and then their feet onto a footstool can be helpful. Uh, and some people find that having their feet planted on the ground. So um, if you need to move forward in the seat more and then use more cushions behind you so you can have your feet flat on the ground, some people find that's more comfortable as well. Um, so Julie's worried about um, getting older and will the pain get worse? Um, and particularly with bi biologics as well. Um, Julie, please do give us a call on the helpline. We'll pop the helpline number in the comments as well because um, we can absolutely have a chat about that and, and support you as well. Uh, oh hi Jim. Uh, Jim says my lower back has been very painful especially when slightly bending forward when baking. Would more, would more strengthening be best? I stretch a lot and change position. Yeah absolutely. So um, particularly a lot of people find like when washing up and things like that as well when you're in that position halfway between standing upright and then fully leaning forward that kind of 45 degree angle a lot of people find that uncomfortable. Strengthening is one of the best things you can do. So I'll go through some strengthening exercises in a moment, but also another one um, that can be particularly helpful is lying on your front and then just gently arching upwards. So you're stretching the muscles along the back of the spine to help with that. Um, I'm happy if you want me to, I can send through um, an exercise for that gym. So feel free to um, email me or drop me a message on Twitter as we're in contact. Um, and then Paula gets pain in her hip um, when standing for any amount of time. And also in the spine around bra strap, afraid to do um, do that at the moment, I think. Um, what exercise would be good for this? So I'd recommend taking a look. Um, I'll reply to your comment with the links um, at the end of the video. But I'd recommend having a look at my hip video and also at the rib pain video. So around the bra strap level, that's sort of the mid part of the spine and into the ribs as well. So I've given lots of advice on exercises for that there. So I'll, I'll send you those links individually. Uh, yeah, and, and um, things like washing up, unloading um, washing machine it can be difficult as well. So definitely um, strengthening can be helpful for that. And um, with the strengthening exercises, it's definitely little and often as well. So I'll, I'll go through how to keep them safe too. Um, so Barat is asking about if um, exercise helps reduce calcification around joints. Yeah, so absolutely. Um, exercising frequently and keeping things moving can really help um, reduce the likelihood of, of any fusions. Um, in terms of stopping them progressing but if you've already got fusions in the joints that's when you need to be careful in terms of the amount of movement you do and really get some personalised advice because if you've already got fusions you're not going to be able to, to undo those with exercises unfortunately. Um, oh fantastic Sarah, Sarah Jane's work has provided a specialist chair and a sit-stand desk. 
that's fantastic. And absolutely, obviously it's difficult at the moment with COVID, but if you are getting back into an office and you have difficulties, then definitely speak to your HR department about options that you can have. Um, and also your GP can refer to an occupational therapist who are specialists in be being able to advise um, on things like that, both for in the work and around the home as well, on, op on options to make it helpful for you. Um, yeah, Tara saying that um, her legs and hips hurt when lying in bed at night and then in the morning she can't move. So absolutely, um, again, I'll reply to your comment with um, my advice for night pain as well. Certainly, if you're finding that this is happening really frequently, it might be worth speaking to your rheumatologist just to make sure that your AS is controlled enough. Because if you're getting lots of night pain, um, then it can be um, because your general inflammation is too high. So definitely worth speaking to your rheumatology team. Um, but I'll also share the um, sleep information as well. Um, ah, great. Uh, I think Jenny is popping some links in the comments, so do check that there. Um, we've got all the, the links to the My AS, My Life um, section as well. And Ellen's asked, are osteopaths or chiropractors better for spondylitis? Um, so with any manual therapist, so osteopath, chiropractor or physiotherapist, I'd recommend speaking to someone before you book an appointment. Um, they should be very happy to chat with you at length to make sure that the way that they treat is appropriate for you. Um, if someone isn't comfortable having this discussion before booking an appointment, then I recommend um, looking for someone else. But generally, any kind of manual therapy, osteopathy, physiotherapy or chiropractic is absolutely safe, apart from the techniques where they're clicking the joints and manipulating the joints. So if someone is wanting to, to do these techniques on you, then I definitely recommend saying, um, you know, not giving consent for those. It's something that they should be talking with you about um, and getting your consent in particular to do those techniques. So um, it's something you should be able to discuss with them. The thing with the clicking with the joints, they're very gentle um, techniques and they can be really appropriate for a lot of people. But with AS, when you've got inf active inflammation there, it can trigger a flare up. But also if you've had active inflammation, you can then get some weakness locally in the bones for a short period of time while they're recovering. So sometimes you can be unaware that there's a weakness there and, and even a gentle movement like that, it may potentially um, cause a problem there. So we do recommend just avoiding those techniques altogether. There are lots of other nice gentle techniques that they can use that have the same benefits as those techniques, but without those risks. Um, so definitely worth chatting to them and really shopping around really as well. Um, so Julie, Julie is asking about personal topic in terms of um, sexual intercourse can be painful and for a couple of days afterwards. Um, we can actually, we could do a blog post all about that um, because it is something that I think not many people really know who they can talk to for that. There's definitely lots of advice out there. Um, I think the joint, uh, creakyjoints.org, their website, I think they've covered relationships and advice like that as well. So worth taking a look. I'll try and find that and just reply to that. But certainly it's a topic we can cover as well. Um, and Philip's struggling to get in and out of the bath as well. Um, so that's something, it can be helpful. Oh, okay, so the problem is lifting legs high enough to clear the bathroom. Um, so with that, I would focus on the hips and improving the mobility, but also the strength as well. Um, so Philip, if you want to get in contact with me, we can go through some exercises you can do to help, hopefully help with that as well. Um, yep, yep, Gianne, I'll send you the link for the rib um, advice as well. Um, and Brad, oh, that's a reply to Sarah, so that's fine. Um, oh, Jan is asking, um, so thanks for this, but I'm sorry to say I'm finding some of these comments very disheartening as a newly diagnosed and now in biologics. Is there anyone that isn't in pain? Do strengthening exercises work? She used to be a yoga teacher, but had a year in bed before being diagnosed and struggling not to be in pain. And no one else seems to be talking about women's pelvic health and sex. Are there links out there? Absolutely. So as I said, I'll, I'll definitely share that. Um, but Jan, definitely um, a lot of the people commenting obviously are watching the video because they're needing help with low back pain and hip pain as well. So I think probably in terms of representative of how people are doing generally, um, we're going to get more people who are struggling with this issue. So please don't be disheartened. Um, all the research um, out there is showing really good effect with biologics as well. Obviously, it doesn't work for everyone, but in terms of the stats, um, they are very promising as well. Certainly from personal experience, um, I have AS and I started Humira uh, just over a year ago, I think it is now. Um, and I personally, I found it really helpful. Um, my mobility's improved, my pain's reduced. Um, I get a lot less um, daily pain, but also uh, my flare-ups are less frequent as well, particularly my rib flares. 
So certainly um, from my personal experience, I found it you know, really, really helpful. And it's helped me get back into doing the exercises that I used to do as well, particularly yoga. I'd, um, I'd really reduced yoga a lot because of the pain and particularly anything where I was arching my back would just set off a rib flare up pretty much immediately. So for me, it's really helped get back to that. So um, if you want to chat more, please do get in contact or give our helpline a call anytime because we're, we're there to support as well. Um, okay, so Julie's saying about working in, in a private health clinic in the reception desk and chair and computer are horrendous. Um, if you're an employee there, they should be able to, um, to make adaptations and modifications for that as well. Do you give us a call on the helpline and we can chat through um, your rights with, with work in terms of um, what, you know, what your rights are, particularly because AS um, can be classed as a disability as well, so they should be able to help with that. Um, Um, oh great, and a few people are replying to Jan, so please do reply and, and give her your um, um, your own experiences if you found biologics helpful and if, if things have improved for you as well. Right, so we're up to date on the exercises as well, so uh, on the questions there, sorry. So I'll progress on to the strengthening exercise that I said about. So firstly, it might be um, worth watching the video first of all, and then if you want to try the strengthening exercises, you can then come back and watch them again later and follow follow the video along because the strengthening exercises can be a little bit strong so I, I want to make sure that they are safe for you so it's easier to watch them all the way through and then decide if, if you think that'll be helpful and safe for you. Absolutely if you have any fusions in your back, um, if you've had any hip replacements and any surgery in your back or if you're currently experiencing a flare-up I'd recommend not doing them at the moment. Do feel free to get in contact with me because we can discuss some exercises that would be appropriate for you and give you a personalised plan as I said earlier, it's completely free. Um, I'm working for NAS at the moment to, um, to support you, so do get in contact if you need. So the first exercise that is a really good strengthening exercise, I went through this for the rib pain exercise because it does work your whole spine, um, but it's a wall press up. So I, I can't, <laughs> with my technology set up, I wasn't able to have the computer set up so I could then stand up again. I will work on my tech. Um, so I'm gonna, you're gonna have to imagine that I'm standing face onto a wall and the wall is around here. So what you want to do is um, you'll be standing against the wall with your palms flat against the wall. Stand at a comfortable distance from there. The closer you are to the wall the easier the exercise so when you're first starting this just stand nice and close and then you want to have all your support on the wall. Just gently tense your stomach muscles a little bit so that you've got a bit of support there and then you're going to gently lean your body forward while bending your elbows to bring your head closer to the wall and then push back out again. So it's an exercise for your arms, but also because you're using the muscles through your spine as well, it's going to help strengthening around your spine. It's a good all-round exercise. Um, to make it more difficult, you just simply step your feet further from the wall. And then again, just having the palms flat, then bending your elbows so that you come closer and then pushing back out again. Um, with this one, you can change the intensity up until sort of a certain distance by bringing your feet further away. If it's then comfortable, you can do it kneeling on the floor and then into a press up. And then again, if you want to make it more advanced from there, you can go into a full press up. So where you're um, on your toes and then onto your arms and doing a press up movement like that. Um, so it's a really good way to test out that exercise before going into a full press up, particularly if you get rib flare ups as well. You want to make sure that you're going to keep it safe and comfortable for that too. Then in terms of um, something a bit more working on stability as well, something that's really important to us is always to work on your balance with AS2. So with this one, it's a four point kneeling exercise. And again, there's a couple of ways you can modify it. So I'll just bring the camera down so you can see what I'm doing here. So with this exercise, you want to go onto all fours into a tabletop position. So your hands are gonna be directly underneath your shoulders and your knees are gonna be underneath your hips. If you have hypermobility, hyper so where your elbows um, move too much, make sure you don't lock your elbows out so it's comfortable there. And then you just want to keep your head nice and neutral, so looking up very slightly. And then you're going to focus on, um, first I'm going to start with my left hand, and I'm just going to take gently take the left hand up about one centimetre while keeping balance on the rest of my limbs, and then come back down. And then again, up on the right, and then come back down. And you're keeping your stomach nice and tensed as well, so you're really engaging your spinal muscles. And then you can move onto your knees, so you just shift your weight to the other limb slightly, you've got that balance, and then you just lift gently up, 
and come back down. It's a very subtle movement and then the last one here. If that's then comfortable, you can then progress to where you bring the arm all the way up in front of you. So again, you'll just be focusing on having the nice stability in the rest of your limbs, tensing your stomach muscles slightly, and then just bringing your arm out in front of you like Superman, and then come back down. And then again, sort of shift so your balance is correct, and then bringing the other arm up, and in front, and then come back down. Now, I, I won't do the leg because my TV is behind me, so I can get about this far before I'm gonna, at risk of kicking it. So I'll leave that one for there. But essentially, you are gonna, you're going to then be straightening your knee, your leg out behind you as well. And then the last strengthening exercise I want to show is a bridge exercise. So for this one, you want to lie on your back. Uh, come down a little bit. Um, you can use a pillow underneath your head if you need to, to help support your neck. And then you're going to be lying on your back, pop your hands next to you so you can use them for a bit of downward support. And then you want your knees and feet about hip width apart and feet flat on the floor. And then with this exercise, you're essentially going to lift up so your pelvis comes up and you're going to have a straight line from your knee, hip and shoulder. So that essentially is going to look like this. So you've got a straight line from your knee through your hip up into your shoulder and then come back down. So with this, you can use your breath. So you can take a deep breath in to prepare. As you breathe out, just gently tense your stomach muscles so you're almost pushing your back into the, into the floor and then you're gonna lift up. So for me, that would look like taking a deep breath in, tensing stomach muscles and breathe out. Hold for a breath and then breathe in and breathe out. And with this, it's important to make sure that you're keeping nice and supported. Just come back up so that I'm upright again. Um, so you want to be nice and supported with that. And also you want to make sure that you've got a pillow underneath your head if you need it, um, particularly if your neck is painful. And also you want to make sure that if you get any rib pain or anything, you can do that lying in bed as long as you're nice and stable and kind of in the center of the bed so you've got the balance. Um, but that can just be a little bit less pressure on the ribs themselves. So as I said after the video, we will share a blog post and some um, written exercises as well. So I have written up all those exercises, both the mobility ones, but also the strengthening ones, um, with all the timings, so how many repetitions I'd recommend you do, um, and some more detailed um, instructions. So if you do want to give those a go, then feel free to wait until we've released those, look back on this video, and then you can try along in your own time like that as well, make sure they're safe and comfortable for you. If you have any problems with them, do just let me know. So I'm gonna catch up on some questions again because we've got lots coming in, and then I'll go through the last bits that I've got in terms of um, self-care for low back and SI joint pain. Um, let's see. Okay, yeah, Angela has a sitting job and finds it crucial to prop, prop her legs up, um, which helps support her back and hips. That's really good you found that helpful. Oh, great, we've got a few people replying to Jan. That's really nice, um, everyone's uh, sharing all the different experience. That's really good. Uh, let's see. We've got a few people discussing in terms of what their companies provide. So do if you're having problems with getting any um, modifications at work, do have a look through the comments as well. Uh, oh, Julie, I'm really glad you're finding the live videos helpful. Uh, yay, lots of people are replying to Jan. That's great. Um, uh, Heather couldn't do that exercise kneeling. So absolutely, if you get knee pain, that's a really good point, Heather, thank you. If you get knee pain, you can do that either kneeling in bed or you can do it um, with a rolled up blanket underneath your knees as well to make that more comfortable. Um, you also can do that modified again. So if you're standing against a wall and you've got the pressure there and then you're practicing just taking one hand away from the wall, that can be a little bit more gentle as well and help you build up to that as well. Um, Yep, and also um, Abby is saying a nice thick exercise mat can be really helpful as well. Or if you've got a couple of mats, you can just double up as well. Uh, yeah, Emily is asking if when um, if other people find that when they have a flare-up they get ridiculously tired and a bit weak. Absolutely, fatigue is a really um, common symptom, especially with a flare-up. And actually that's the topic of my next live video as well, so um, I'll be sharing all my advice on that as well. Uh, Um, yeah, and if um, some people have fibromyalgia as well, which I think can, can aggravate it as well. 
Oh, hi, Gillian. Thanks for joining. Um, I'm glad you're finding them helpful. Great. Lots of people um, describing their experiences with biologics as well. Um, let's see. <laughs> Gillian's dog Rosie's joining in. I'm glad to hear that, doing some press ups. <laughs> um, and yes, a few more comments on biologics. That's really good. So lots of really good discussions there. Do check those back at the end of the live as well. Um, we did have one comment as well about swimming and hydrotherapy. So absolutely, at the moment, a lot of people are finding that without their usual swimming or their usual hydrotherapy sessions, that things are, are getting difficult as well. So hopefully adding in these exercises that are strengthening but nothing too high impact will be helpful. And then definitely when the pools are reopening, it's worth looking at swimming or even just doing exercise and walking in the pool because you've got the weightlessness from the water, but you're also going to be moving, moving the joints. You're going to help the mobility and the flexibility. And also just moving through the water is going to be a really good workout for your muscles without having the impact on the joints. So as things do start to open up, if it's safe for you to after the um, COVID-19 outbreak, then do look at um, services local to you as well. On our website, you can search with your postcode to find hydrotherapy sessions that are near you and the physio-led um, NAS groups as well. So do check those out too. And then in terms of other self-care um, advice, so definitely hot and cold can be really helpful. Heat tends to be more relaxing for the muscles. So if you're getting a lot of muscle tension across the lower back, um, heat can be really good at relaxing that. And then ice can be really beneficial in terms of numbing the area. So for either of those, I'd recommend using either a hot water bottle or an ice pack and then wrap them in a tea towel so you're protecting the skin from the heat or the ice. And you can just place it on the area that's painful for 10, 15 minutes at a time. And you can do that every hour if you need to as well. So you can use it quite frequently to help build up that positive effect. If you're having difficulty sleeping, then the heat or the ice just before bed can be really beneficial as well. It helps calm things down and before you're then trying to get to sleep and hopefully keeping it more comfortable through the night too. And then massage, I did say that you would need um, either the heel of your hand, a tennis ball, or one of my buddies, the spiky massage ball at some point today. So now I'm going to go through just some really gentle massage techniques to help um, across the lower back and into the pelvis as well. So for all of these, generally they should be comfortable. Sometimes you'll find a few little tender points in the muscles, and particularly if you have fibromyalgia, then do be really cautious not to overdo it. Um, because sometimes that it can feel a bit sensitive at the time and then it can feel um, more flary or more painful afterwards. So with this and with, with anything new, just start nice and gently, start for a short amount of time. And then over the course of a few days, you can gradually build that up and just make sure you're doing it within what your body will tolerate. So with all the massage techniques, um, you're using either the heel of your hand, a tennis ball if you have one, or a spiky massage ball. And you're going to be applying a little bit of gentle pressure in circular movements. So for this, if I turn, try and show you what I'm talking about. Um, so you want to use either the ball or the heel of the hand on the base of the back, and then you're aiming for the area across your lower back, but not directly on the spine. So if you feel on your back, <laughs> sorry, the, the ice cream man's just outside, so I'm, I apologize if you can't hear me very well. Um, feel across your back going from right to left or left to right. You can use your thumbs onto the back to feel and just feel where you've got the bony bits in the middle of the spine. You want to avoid putting pressure directly on those because they'll be tender. But you then want to use either your fingertips or the heel of your hand or a ball, and you can just place it on the back, see about the angle, and you can just use your hand to do nice circular movements along there. So I'm going just up to the side of the bony bits of my back, but not right onto the painful bit. And again on the other side, and go across. You can then, if you can reach, you can go further up as well. And then you can go lower down, so onto the top of the buttocks. So that's the area where the sacroiliac joints sit. In terms of using a spiky massage ball, you can then do that sitting against a wall or standing against a wall. So if you're using a ball, if you place it in a sock, you're then able to stand against the wall and hold the sock so the ball is hanging behind you. And then you can just lean onto the wall and then you can move side to side. So generally I'd recommend doing that standing. Um, and then just moving side to side so you get the, the pressure from you leaning onto it, but then the side to side movement so you're able to move it around. Using the sock means that you can guide the ball and also you spend less time chasing it across the floor when it drops and rolls away. Um, so hopefully people have found that helpful. You can, you can do that kind of massage anywhere in the body as well. So if you get painful legs or painful shoulders, again, just doing nice gentle, gentle downward pressure in the circular movements 
is the best way to do it and just avoiding any of the bony areas because that's going to be uncomfortable um, I'll just bring that up a little bit more so um, hopefully everyone's finding that helpful do let me know if you have any questions on that a couple of people are asking about the spiky massage balls if you go on Amazon and just type in spiky massage balls you'll have loads of different options different brands um, I will post a link in the comments to the ones that I've got um, just in case anyone wants those particular ones but they're um, really really cheap loads of different brands so pop on Amazon or I'll pop the link in as well um, we've had someone mentioning a TENS machine that again can be really really helpful particularly on the lower back so you can place the um, pads uh, at the base of the back and then higher up and it basically produces an electrical stimulation that you can feel that helps distract from the pain if you have anything like fibromyalgia that can be particularly helpful as well um, but definitely speak to your rheumatologist or your GP or your physio beforehand just to make sure that it is suitable for you um, and obviously if you do look at buying one just check the instructions as well to make sure you use it correctly I do think it's pacemakers you're unable to use them with so um, do be cautious with that <coughs> excuse me um, and then I mentioned a little bit about sleeping as well before the other recommendation for sleeping particularly if you've got low back pain is sleeping on your side could be the most comfortable and then putting a, a cushion between your knees as well so when you're sleep, lying on your side with um, a pillow between your knees you keep your back in a more neutral position and also you're less likely to kind of roll forward and twist with that as well so it can be a little bit more comfortable too we have got um, loads of sleep advice on the website as well so do have a look for that and then another common thing that people ask me about is anything they can do with their diet any nutrition advice um, that I can give in terms of helping um, keep their bones nice and, nice and healthy and strong if you need any particular sort of specialised advice I'd recommend speaking to your GP or to a nutritionist but some good general advice in terms of maintaining your bone health particularly at the moment you want to make sure we're getting cal enough calcium and enough vitamin D so a lot of people are finding if they're not going outdoors at the moment um, they're not going to be getting enough vitamin D from the sunlight Generally, we want around 20 minutes a day of sunlight on the face, the forearms and the lower legs. That's normally enough to then be producing our own vitamin D. But if you're shielding at the moment and you're not able to get out each day for around 20 minutes, um, then definitely speaking to your GP about supplementing might be an option that would be, be worth doing for you. There are some dietary sources of vitamin D that you can help add in, um, but it is a little bit diff more difficult to get enough from your diet. Um, so I would recommend looking at things like um, egg yolks, uh, oily fish and red meat and liver are good sources of vitamin D um, and also you can find some foods like breakfast cereals are fortified with vitamin D as well um, so do have a look for those but yeah if you're not getting much sun at the moment it might be worth asking your GP about supplementing in terms of calcium uh, you can get some really good dietary sources of calcium uh, so that includes dairy products or if you don't have dairy a lot of the dairy alternatives are fortified with calcium and vitamin D as well um, green leafy vegetables things like broccoli uh, that doesn't include spinach unfortunately although that is a good source of iron which can be really helpful and then soybeans and tofu are great sources if you don't have um, if you don't have meat nuts as well uh, and then fish where you have the bones so things like sardines and pilchards have plenty of calcium in them um, and then things of, um, with fortified flour so a lot of bread has um, calcium fortified into it as well which can be helpful so I'm just going to go through the questions as well because I've come to the end of the advice that I can give but hopefully um, I might be able to answer a few more questions. Wow we've got loads, this is great. Uh, let's see. Yeah so again people were discussing biologics, some people found that they have swapped so they've been helpful. Um, so it's definitely worth asking your rheumatologist if things aren't well, well managed then definitely speak to your rheumatologist because they'll be able to go through all the options with you. Um, lots of biologics talk <laughs> we should probably do a session on that uh, Julie's asking about herbal remedies if you check on our website we do have a section on herbal remedies but there isn't really anything that we recommend in particular for AS um, I imagine lots of people have some anecdote, anecdotal th th things that they find work as well um, yep lots of people with um, freeze gel so especially when you're out and about if you're in work um, using a cold gel or a heat gel can be really helpful as well obviously as long as your skin is not sensitive to it uh, and Julie's asking if anyone uses a TENS machine hopefully that that helped uh, Jim uses a cherry stone pack that you um, heat in the microwave and put on 
on his back, find it great when sit sitting for a long while. Yeah, that's really, really helpful. Um, oh yeah, and on Amazon or in lots of different places, you can get a really long hot water bottle. So it's like the length of your spine. That can be really helpful if you get pain all the way along the spine, but also you can just have it across the lower back and round on the top of the pelvis as well, which can be really soothing. Um, and saying she's finding it too painful to use anything other than hands to massage SI joints. Absolutely, particularly if you've got inflammation there, it can be really, really tender to touch. Um, the good thing as well with using your hands is you're able to kind of really feel how much pressure you're doing as well. So it can be helpful if you don't have any hand or wrist pain um, to use your hands because then you can really make sure that you're only using enough pressure to get the improvement without um, aggravating it or without causing more pain as well. Uh, yeah, James, they should be really easy to find uh, the spiky massage balls on Amazon, but I said I'll, I'll pop a link in the comments as well. I'll catch up on all of these after the um, after the live's finished. Um, yeah, I feel like do just get in contact. I'll get back to you as soon as possible as well. I hope we can have a chat through things. Um, uh, so Kate's asking about now the symptoms are less, how frequently should she do the strengthening exercises? So hopefully reduce um, the symptoms as she's getting older as well. Um, so she has thickening of the SI joints in the last MRI. So absolutely, if you've not got any fusions already, that's really good. Um, and definitely the, the more exercise you can do, the better really. So I'd recommend if your symptoms are really well managed and you feel up to it, doing a form of strengthening and stretching every single day is ideal. Um, Definitely looking at classes online can be really helpful if, if you find those helpful. But if you want any particular um, exercise plans, just get in contact with me and I can put something together for that. Um, yeah, Anne's recommending vitamin D supplementation if vegetarian or vegan. Um, that can be really helpful if you're not getting out in the sunlight, but otherwise sunlight should be plenty. Um, but yeah, do if you're worried about vitamin D, you can get your levels tested by the GP as well. If you have lots of um, general bone um, aches and pains, they often test for vitamin D deficiency for that. Um, oh, Jillian, you're very welcome. I'm glad to be able to help. Uh, great, Gerald's been practicing Pilates once a week for three years now. Um, and are oh, brilliant. And during lockdown, the classes have moved online which means it's able to do them three to four times a week and it's made a huge difference. That's fantastic. Lots of people are finding that actually having the online classes is excellent because you can fit them in a lot more easily and not having to travel to them as well. So hopefully lots of people will be keeping up um, running the online classes after lockdown. That's something I'm keen, keen to see, definitely. Uh, Elaine's asking about using a recliner chair. Um, she said, the more I read, it says to sit up straight. Is this not a good position? No, absolutely. If if a recliner chair is comfortable, then I would say go with what's comfortable. Obviously, you don't want to be um, lying down for too long a period of time in one go or too frequently. But if you're doing some general mobility exercises, if you're moving around the house and getting outdoors as much as you can, and you're doing some kind of strengthening exercises, reclining in a chair is absolutely fine if it's comfortable for you. Um, yeah, go with what's comfortable. Uh, Angelian says capsicum cream is brilliant, but wear gloves when applying. Absolutely, yes, that's really good Good advice in terms of wearing the gloves. Uh, there's something as well called Tiger Balm, which some people find helpful too, but definitely you don't want to do that with your bare hands and then scratch your eye. Um, right, so I think we've covered all the questions. Do let me know if you have any other questions. I'll give you a moment just in case. As I said, the video will be staying on the page. We're then, uh, we'll then upload it onto YouTube and we'll put the video and the blog and the written exercises all on our website on the My AS My Life page. So do check those out later on if you want to go through the exercises. Um, and yeah, any other tips or anything, do pop in the comments because I can add that to the blog as well to help people with that. Um, do get in contact with me directly if you want any more individual advice um, or if you just want to chat. I'm available both on the helpline each day, but also you can email me directly, zoe at nas.co.uk. Then we can either email or we can arrange a time for me to give you a call and chat through things too. The next topic, as I said, will be next week, next Wednesday, the 3rd, 3rd of June at 1pm. I'll be talking all about fatigue. So do let me know if there are any particular areas of that that you want me to help with. Unfortunately, I don't have a magic wand. If I did, that's definitely one of the biggest symptoms I'd want to wave a magic wand over. Um, but there's definitely lots that I can advise you on in terms of helping. I just have lots of different tools in your toolbox to help with that. Uh, 
Right, so yeah, any other questions? If not, I will probably finish up there. Um, yeah, hopefully that's been helpful. And like I said, in terms of fatigue, both um, hopefully the videos provided a few different things that you may not have known about uh, to help with low back and SI joint pain. I think the key is really just to have lots of different tools in your tool toolbox because you'll have different symptoms over time. You'll have different flare-ups and different intensity of flare-ups. So if you've got lots of different options you can try, you're then able um, to just try different things at different times and hopefully help get things recovering a lot quicker. Uh, Jenny has asked about sleep hygiene. Um, I spoke about that in the sleep video, so I'll, I'll drop your message with that. Um, I'll reply to your comment with the link specifically to that. Great. Thank you everyone for joining and thank you so much for contributing as well. It's been really great to have a chat with you all and I hope you all keep safe and keep well and hopefully enjoy the sunshine that we've got here in Norfolk. Take care everyone.